tasmai shri namaha shri chaitanya manopishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadantikam vande ham shri gurum shri yuta padakamalam shri gurum vaishnavam scha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana ragunatam vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri radha krishna padan sahagana lalita shri vishakavitamscha he krishna karuna sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kalpataru pyascha, kripa sindhu bhaevacha, patitanam pavane pyo, vaishnave pyo namo namba. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurapak. Abunda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 3. In the text for today is text 42 and 43. Narayan Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Naru Kamam Devim Sashitim Vyatam Tato Jayamadiri Nashtaprayeshwa Bhatreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavati Tamshloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashti Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Sukdegoswami, the son of Vyashti, in his turn delivered the Bhagavatam to the great emperor Parikshita who sat surrounded by sages on the bank of the Ganges, awaiting death without taking food or drink. Mother, you can read us. A quote by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. All transcendental messages are received properly in the chain of disciplinic succession. This disciplinic succession is called parampara. Usually, therefore, Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literatures are received through the parampara system. The reception of knowledge is not bona fide. Vyasdev delivered the message to Sukhadev Swami, Goswami, and from Sukhadev Goswami, Sutta Goswami received the message. One should therefore receive the message of Bhagavatam from Sutta Goswami or from his representatives and not from any irrelevant interpreter. Emperor Parikshit received the information of his death in time and he at once left his kingdom and family and sat down on the bank of the Ganges to fast till death. All great sages, rishis, philosophers, mystics, etc went there due to, the, to his imperial position. 
they offered many suggestions about his immediate duty. And at last, it was settled that he would hear from Sukadev Goswami about Lord Krishna. Thus, the Bhagavatam was spoken to him. Shripada. Sorry, Shripada Shankracharya, who preached Mayavadi philosophy and stressed the impersonal feature of the Absolute, also recommended that one must take shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, for there is no hope of gain from debating. Indirectly, Shripada Shankracharya admitted that what he preached in a flowerly, grammatically interpretations of the Vedanta Sutra cannot help one at the time of death. At the critical hour of death, one must recite the names of Govinda. This is the recommendation of the great transcendentalist, Sukadev Goswami, had long ago stated the same truth that at the end, one must remember Narayana. That is the essence of all spiritual activities. In pursuance of this eternal truth, Srimad Bhagavatam was heard by Emperor Parikshit and it was recited by the able Sukadev Swami, Goswami. And both the speaker and receiver of the messages of the Bhagavatam were duly delivered by the same medium. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Bhavi. So we hear that in the previous verse, 41, Shinabhyasthi, who is the author of the Srimad Bhagavatam, he's the one who taught Bhagavatam, he passed from Bhagavatam to his son. And his son, according to the words, he delivered the Bhagavatam to the great emperor Parikshit, who sat surrounded by the sages on the bank of the Ganga, Ganges awaiting that without taking food or drink. Now, Shaprabhar is explaining that the transcendental message is received to the medium of Parampara. Here in Bhagavad Gita, in the fourth chapter, it says, Evam Parampara Pratham, Evam Rajashayu Vidu. Even Bhagavad Gita was delivered through Parampara. And in the due course, when it was cut off, forgotten, then, the, it had to be revived by Krishna himself to Arjuna. In a similar way, the Bhagavatam was given actually to Vyashtev. And Vyashtev, why Vyashtev wrote the Bhagavatam, we all know the reason. And it will be explained in detail in the fifth chapter of the same canto why Srimad Bhagavatam was written down. What was the defect that or dissatisfaction we asked and felt when he wrote Vedanta Sutra and many, many other scriptures. All were written down or all was spoken by Vyasdev and his disciples would write it down. Now, here the important, the first important point is that we must accept the knowledge from disciplic succession. Those who have Gita in the hand, you find that on the page which is, uh, as soon as the introduction finishes, the next page shows the parampara. So if you see the parampara is coming from Krishna to Brahma, Brahma to Narada, Narada to Vyasa and so on, till Shabrapad. Why? What is the proof or what is the strength of the parampara? That the knowledge is unchanging and unbonified. I mean, sorry, fully bonified. Whereas what is not in parampara should not be accepted. Because even mantra given by uh, any guru is not in parampara, it's not effective. It is useless. That is written in the Vedic scriptures. That's why you find that the example in Shripa, uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is, Sri Prabhupada, when he went to America, is that it's not a short that there was any shortage of Bhagavad Gita. There were so many editions of Bhagavad Gita, even in America, before Prabhupada did that. But it is only when this particular Bhagavad Gita came out, people started accepting the authority of Krishna, authority of Bhagavad Gita, and changed their lives to Krishna consciousness. Now in this case, we find Vyashtev, 
he gave to Sukhdev Ji. Sukhdev Ji, when he was reciting, Sutta Goswami was there. So now you, even we see three people from Vyash to Sukhdev to Sutta Goswami. And it was Parikshit Maharaj's decision. We, we all know that when he was cursed, that he, you'd have to leave the body in seven days. He accepted the curse as a blessing. And he went down, giving up the kingdom. And he went down to the river Ganges and he sat down to fast till death. It means he was so serious about going back home. And many people came there. It's like some sages came, some yogis came, some brahmanas came, and different, different people gave different, different advices. But Krishna knows his devotees. So Krishna sent Sukhdev Goswami. And Sukhdev Goswami, when he says, he says, the perfect thing you can do in seven days is to hear the glories of Krishna. That's why Bhagavatam is nothing but glorification of Krishna. So Prabhupada, in a lecture, he says, beautiful story of the beautiful personality of Godhead. The whole of the Bhagavatam is very, very beautiful. If you take, you have to become a rasika. Rasika means you have to get a taste of it. And once you get a taste of it, you will not give it up. You will enjoy it. And you will enjoy it the more you read it again and again and again. Just like I have my own realization that when I read Bhagavad Gita first time, only I wanted to read it again and again and again and again. Even till today I read. There's so much sweetness in it. And some chapters are so sweet that you feel the presence of Krishna, especially the ninth chapter. You feel like Krishna is talking to you. In the similar way, when you hear Bhagavatam, it gives you so many angles of different, different devotees, so many happenings, so many pastimes of Krishna, just to teach you one thing, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. Now, if you remember, in the, I think it was verse number 35, to re for people to realize the Lord is unborn and inactive. It looks like he's unborn and inactive, but actually he does take birth and is fully active. But to realize this point is very, very difficult. <clears throat> now, if we explain this point to people who do not follow very culture, it will seem to be very difficult for them to accept. Like those who follow Abrahamic religion like Christianity, Islam, the Jewish religion, for them to accept the Lord to be a person is very, very difficult because there is no clear information given. Whereas the Bhagavatam is the only scripture where complete information is given that Lord is not any person, he is a person. Like when we see, speak Prabhupada mantra, in the second line he says, Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashtakadesh Tarni. Nirvishesh Shunyavadi. Nirvishesh means impersonalism. Shunyavadi means void is it. Now, if you read Bhagavatam, both these things disappear. You never, it brings you a new understanding that Lord is not an imperson. There is an impersonal feature, but actually Lord is a person. Papad gives an example like if there's a presidential car passing and people know this is a presidential car, so people will stand and show respect to the car, whether the president is inside or not inside. But if he happens to open the window and show his face, people will feel satisfied. Yes, he is a person inside. So the car may be impersonal, but the, the president is a person inside. In a similar way, only in few cases in the very scriptures where the Lord is revealed. For example, like, I don't know if you have done the Isha Upanishad. If you read the Isha Upanishad, there's 18 verses. Up to chapter 14, I mean, up to verse 14, there's no revelation of Krishna. But if you read the th three last verses, Krishna is revealed. That in the beginning, in the last three verses, it says, please remove this glaring in front, uh, effulgence from your face so that I can see you. It means even to see Krishna is impossible. Prabhupada says that even when Krishna was on this planet, it was very, very difficult <clears throat> to accept Krishna. Even those who have seen with the eyes. For example, like Duryodhana saw him, he never accepted. 
many demonic people like there are some Kansa, they had seen Krishna, but the, their attitude, their understanding had no devotion. They were pratikul. Pratikul means their whole attitude was unfavorable. That's why Krishna never revealed himself. And Krishna reserves the right whether to reveal himself or not. Like in Bhagavad Gita, there is a famous verse of Jananti Mamamuta, Manusim Prakritim Ashrita. Manusim means a human being. When the absolute truth comes as a human being, it's very, very difficult for people to accept. For example, <clears throat> if we tell people that these mountains out here, or trees out here, or the air, or the water, fire, everything is coming from Krishna. He is a person, they will not accept. How can you? Now for that, they have to go deeper. Like, like you go to your soul inside. Nobody can answer, first of all. Most people do not know what is soul. Unless you hear from the authority like Krishna himself. In Bhavi Gita, Prabhupada explains that even when you read the verse starting from 12 right up to 30 in the second chapter, he speaks about what is Atma. But in the end, Sri Prabhupada says, in the last three verses, 20, 28, 29, 30, that even after hearing Atma about the soul, they'll find it wonderful, amazing. How can it be? Some may accept, some may not accept. Some may find it to be very amazing because this is so tiny. And it is there in the heart of every living entity. For them to accept, very difficult. So, but Sri Prabhupada comments that simply on the authority that Krishna is speaking, we have to accept. There's no proof like a machine or like an X-ray or maybe any computer or any machine which can show you Atma because it's a spiritual. Just like the sound waves coming from my mobile here. You can't see it, but the way is document. And we are holding the mobile, we are actually speaking. Of course, these days you even have the video on it. So you see the person. So if you have faith in the for mobile, oh, there is a connection between this person and me. Why not have a clear cut faith that Krishna is speaking to you from Bhagavad Gita? On that basis, even the Bhagavatam is telling you that the Lord is a person. Now, Sri Prabhupada explains, originally, Sukhdeva Goswami was an impersonalist. But after hearing Vyasadeva uh, about the glories of Krishna Bhagavatam, he found that the Lord is a person. Same thing with the four Kumaras. The Kumaras in the beginning did not accept, but later on, they accepted. Now, even in the second paragraph, Sri Prabhupada speaks about Shripad Sankaracharya. Everybody know who is Sankaracharya. Can anyone say who is Sankaracharya? Anybody likes to try? Who is Sankaracharya? Anybody? Was he, he was a religious leader, but he didn't. Uh, he was a Mayavadi, isn't he? Yes, that is true. But who is actually Shripad Sankaracharya? Maybe yes. are you going? Lord, Lord Shiva. Shiva. Yes, Lord Shiva. He is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was given this mission. In order to drive away Buddhism, he was sent here. Because Buddhism was like making people faithless. And a lot of, not just imperialism, but voidism. But because Buddhism, it is voidism. So Shiva Sankracharya was, I mean, Lord Shiva was sent, which is explained very nicely in the Shastra, that he was given the order by Lord Krishna himself, go, go to the earth teach Mayavati. So a bit confusion had to be brought. Sometimes like if someone is fooling around, then we have to trick the people and trick him. Oh, oh it's not like this. So these tricks work. Just like someone is fooling around with something very expensive item, then best way to tell the person is that this is not for you, just leave it. In the same way, the Vedic scriptures, when Krishna came as Buddha, he told them, I don't believe in the Vedas. That doesn't mean he didn't know Vedas. He is the master of the Vedas. He's Krishna himself. But he hid the Vedas. Prabhupada uses the word camouflage. Like you see the army people, they wear camouflage color uniform. 
Their car is also painted with camouflage color so that if you're standing deep in the forest from top, you can't see. It's like, looks like greenery. So anyway, he camouflaged the waders so that the waders would not be misused further. They already misused. Because when Krishna left, he, he had a desire that everyone would read Bhagavad Gita, but they didn't read. Even now people don't read. Very few people read. That's why Krishna says that, sorry, Krishna told Lord Shiva, in a garb, begun, take a garb, took a garb, and he took the garb of a Brahmin, teach this Mahayari for himself. So, in other way, he did good. First thing is, he pushed away Buddhism out of India. Secondly, he established one nine ashram. Now, what went wrong again? One nine ashram is the Brahmin community. The smart Brahmanas, they started saying by birth, a Brahmin is recognized by birth, maybe in the previous yugas, but not in this yuga. Krishna makes it very clear in the fourth chapter. Verse number 13, he says, Chattu Vanya Maya Shustam. Guna Karma Vibhagasha. He could have written Guna Karma Janma Vibhagasha. There's no word Janma. Guna and Karma. By quality and by activities. Person can be known who is the Brahmin, who is the Shatriya, who is the Vaishya, Sutra. Not by birth. Even Krishna doesn't say like this. But the Brahmins, they have made things so horrible that the whole national system was dismantled and had to be dismantled. And people have lost faith in it. And even today, many people say, oh, Hindus, oh, they are long too many castes. We don't do fall into it. And we don't do hear about it. But they do not know the science behind the Bonain Ashtam system. Which Prabhupada has brought it up. And now people understand when they read Prabhupada's books. Just yesterday we had a session and there was a good discussion. They say many of our, our teachings are contradictory. This was the question. So I said, How? She so said, He is written like this, he is written like that. So, like he says, if you read Shiv Puran, it says Shiva is the Supreme. If you see, Vishnu Pran, Vishnu is supreme. Bhagavatam says Krishna is supreme. And if you read the middle ones, they say Brahma is everything, impersonal. So Vyasthir had a very long vision. He did not want people to be faithless, number one. So he wrote all the scriptures that at least people will practice this, if not this, if not this, if not this. A very long vision. So I gave the example that have you ever been to India? He said, yes. It says, if you notice, if you take a taxi early in the morning, you'll, feel the, you'll see that the taxi wala or the driver of the taxi, when he, you may have sat in the taxi, but before he starts the taxi, he'll do some puja. He'll just do some worship and then to take the taxi out. Same thing is with the shop. No shopkeeper will open without some worship. So this is, this is the advantage of the Vedic culture. That everyone will believe in something and something and something. Like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, uh, Yanti Deva, Vatam Deva, Putri Yanti, Putra Deva. That, uh, sorry, though worshippers of demigods will go to the demigods, worshippers of the ancestors will go to the ancestors, worshippers of the ghosts and spirits will become one of them, and those who worship me will come to me. So he's made it very, very clear. The choice is open. The Vedic script is like very democratic. You choose what you want to, what is suitable for you. It's like a whole school is there. You can start either in the nursery school or the primary school, secondary or university. Everything Vyasdev is given. But even after giving all that, Vyasdev was not happy. That's why Narad Muni came. He will give more knowledge. And what is that knowledge? To write the Bhagavatam. That is how Bhagavatam is written. The beauty of Bhagavatam is that was delivered by Vyas to Sukhdev, Sukhdev to Sutta Anyway, right now, Maharaj Parikshit is listening. The uh, important thing, greatest quality of Maharaj Parikshit is, is a perfect hearer. And Sukhdev Goswami is the perfect reciter. It was such a good combination. Just like any teacher likes to teach a student who is very attentive. <laughs> so much attentive. That he did not eat, he did not take even a sip of water. 
Of course, we can understand that why he didn't take water. Because he knew because of when you're seeking water, he, have, he made this offense. So he decided that I'm not going to drink water. No food was eaten. Nor did he sleep. He didn't even wink. We can say what he called. That he felt like, let me take a nap while today was all speaking. No. So attentive. So here the last line. Sri uh, Prabhupada says, both the speaker and so the man of Bhagavatam were duly delivered by the same medium. What is the medium? Bhagavatam. Now, what is the beauty of Bhagavatam? The beauty of Bhagavatam is we simply have to hear it. Nothing more. Nothing more than that. Simply by hearing the change will come into me. Nothing more. It's not that, oh, I don't understand this. No. First of all, you need faith. And the faith is Krishna Supreme. That is the basic faith you need. Which Krishna gives at the end of Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dharma Parita Jamani Kam Shavuta. Surrender to me, I have delivered you. When one comes to that point, after that, you become competent or you are eligible to hear Bhagavatam. So you hear Bhagavatam after you accept Krishna. Even to understand Bhagavad Gita, you have to accept Krishna. That is the secret. And as you hear Bhagavatam, it goes step by step. It's called Kram. Kram means sequence after sequence after sequence, or division after division after division. It's like climbing steps. 12 steps, you know, Krishna completely. Each canto provides different information. Each canto has a different meaning. <clears throat> and Bhagavatam has 10 subjects, which will be written we uh, reveal later on in the second canto. But for the time being, let's keep it as a mystery. What are the ten subjects? Sarga, Visarga, and, uh, and so on. So in this particular verse, we understood that the knowledge came from Parampara, and we should, we should learn a lesson. Don't listen to anything which will not come from Parampara. Even a simple book, we all are like those who like to read, you can't just pick a book, especially any scripture which is not from parampara, don't read it. It will spoil your brain. Not Prabhupada even came to an extent. Some people, some devotees have said that, oh, we like to hear about our previous acharyas, how they commented. Prabhupada said, I have given you everything. You read my books. So we follow, we obey Prabhupada. We never go wrong. Sometimes people like me, I wouldn't call it a curiosity, but sometimes they are too proud. Oh, I understood this book, so let me also go to Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur and other commentaries. They are all modified, no doubt. But we accept first Prabhupada. Then you can expand it. And Prabhupada has not jumped out of the parampara. He has given you according to the parampara. That's why having faith in Sri Prabhupada, you should hear Bhagavatam. Okay, now if you have any questions, if you, if you may ask, and then we proceed to the text 43. Hare Krishna Prabhupada, I have one question. Mm. Um, in the uh, disciplinic succession in Bhagavad Gita, after the introduction, mm. so after Brahma, then Narada, Narada, then Vyasa, Vyasa, then Madhava. Mm. But here we are saying after Vyasa, it is Sukhadev Swami and Sutta Goswami. Yes. Because Bhagavad Gita was given, I mean, that particular discipline session is to show Prabhupada. Whereas to show Bhagavatam, then we find Vyashtev too. But Vyashtev heard it from Narada. So they did not mention Narada yet. Originally, Narada is the one who actually empowered Vyashtev to write Bhagavatam. And Bhagavatam was given to Sukhdev Goswami. And Sukhdeva Swami in turn gave it to Maharaj Parishad. For example, like many people say, oh, well, the name of Arjuna is not mentioned in the disciplic succession. If you see that list, the name of Arjuna is not there. It's not a necessity. This is understood. Like you know, Krishna says, you are the new recipient of the Bhagavad Gita, which I am speaking again to you. Evam parampara prapsam, evam rajasya. Kala Neha, Yoga Nashta, Prashta, something like that. I'm forgetting the words. Anyway, he said, because the knowledge is forgotten, I'm giving back this knowledge. Same, same knowledge back again. It means you are the new 
personally the top of the discipline. Okay? So we are all hearing from Arjuna actually. Okay. Even the Sun God is not mentioned in the disciplinic succession. No, no. But we were told in that. Succession, you don't read the name of uh, Vivashwan, Sun God, uh, or Manu. It is understood that this is the way it came. Okay, because we are Madhvacharya is a disciple of Vyashtev. Now we do not need to inquire so many things. We have the authority right on the top. So we we also call Godiya Madhva Parambara. Okay. Our our what do you call our disciples? Brahma Godiya Madhva Parambara. Thank you, Prabhuji. Are there any other questions or comments? So we can move to the next text. 43, yeah? Yes, please. I think there are no Translation. This Bhagavad Puran is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Krishna to his abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. Bhagavatam is also called Bhagavat Purana. Okay, Mataji, you can read the purport. Hare Krishna, would uh, Pralat Prabhu like to read the purport? It's a long purport. You can stop in the middle and then we can continue. I actually don't have my Bhagavatam with me, Mataji. Hare okay. Krishna, Mataji. I can continue. Okay. Uh, Purport by, Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Sabarupad Ki Jai. Jai. Lord Krishna has His eternal dhamma or abode where He eternally enjoys Himself with His eternal associates and paraphernalia. And His eternal abode is a manifestation of His internal energy. Whereas the material world is a manifestation of his external energy. When he descends to this to the material world, he displays himself with all paraphernalia in his internal potency, which is called Atma Maya. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that he descends by his own potency, Atma Maya. His form, name, fame, paraphernalia, abode, etc., are not therefore creations of matter. He descends to reclaim the fallen souls to, the, to re-establish re codes of religion which, for, which are directly enacted by him. Except for God, no one can establish the principles of religion. Either or a suitable person employed by him can dictate the codes of religion. Real religion means to know God. <clears throat> our relation with him and our duties in relation with him and to know ultimately our destination after leaving this body, material body. The conditioned souls who are entrapped by material energy hardly know all these principles of life. Most of them are like animals engaged in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. They are mostly engaged in sense enjoyment under the protection, pretension of uh, religiosity, knowledge, or salvation. They are still more blind in the present age of quarrel or Kaliuga. In the age of in the in the Kali Yuga, the population is just a royal edition of the animals. They have nothing to do with the spiritual knowledge or godly religious life. They are also <clears throat> they are so blind that they cannot see anything beyond the jurisdiction of subtle mind, intelligence, or ego. But they are very much proud of their advancement in knowledge, science, and material prosperity. They can risk their lives to become a dog or hog just after leaving the present body. For they have completely lost sight of the ultimate aim of life. The personality of God at Sri Krishna appeared before us just a little prior to the beginning of Kali Yuga. And he returned to his eternal home, practically at the commencement of Kali Yuga. While he was present, he exhibited everything by his different activities. He spoke the Bhagavad Gita specifically, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita specifically and eradicated all pretentious principles of religiosity. And prior to his departure from this material world, he empowered Sri Vyasadeva through Narada 
to compile the messages of the Srimad Bhagavatam and thus both the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are like torch bearers for the blind people of this age. In other words, if men in this age of Kali want to see the real light uh, of life, they must take to these two books only and their aim of life will be fulfilled. Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary study of the Bhagavatam and Srimad Bhagavatam is the summum bonum of life. Lord Sri Krishna personified. We must therefore accept Srimad Bhagavatam as the direct representation of Lord Krishna. One who can see Srimad Bhagavatam can see also Sri Krishna in person. They are identical. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, one of the questions asked, if you remember, in the first chapter is, where will people get enlightenment? After Krishna's departure, Bhagavatam is a scripture. Here, this verse is the Bhagavad Purana is as brilliant as the sun. And it is arising just after the departure of Krishna, who is the Buddha, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. So for your information, the 18 Puranas, and Bhagavatam is right on the top, if you make a pile of it. And Bhagavatam is so powerful that it will give you everything you ask for, anything you ask for. The knowledge is there in the Bhagavatam. Now here Sri Prabhupada makes a point that Krishna has his own dharma. We know that Krishna, da, Krishna is not just Vaikuntha Nath, but even in Vaikuntha, there is variety, such a big variety, so many planets there. And even Krishna's planet has three divisions. There's Dwarka, there's Gokul, and there's Vrindavan. So according to your devotion, you will attain that. And all this, is, this particular Dharma is created by Krishna's internal potency. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the four, I think it's four, six, it says, Ajo apisam vyatma, uttanam ishwara apisam. The Sanusya Tamasya, something like that. I'm forgetting the words. Let me just get the words exactly. Krishna says that though I'm unborn, I take birth, but I take birth from my own what you call, my own internal potency. So this verse is very important. If someone has Bhagavad Gita, you can read four, six. Yeah, it is here. Bhutanami Ishuro Apisan Prakartim Swamadishtaya Sambhavami Atma Maya. Here the word Atma Maya is very important, which Baba is also using here in the purport. That Krishna descends from there to here. Even when he descends, his body does not come from Prakriti, from ordinary Prakriti where we take birth, or where we get his body. He's body is the creation of his own internal potency. Many people ask this question, uh, which is very well answered in the Chetan Chattamata. Who is Radha and who is, what is the uh, relation of Radha and Krishna? Many people do not know this mystery. And even in Bhagavatam, it is not explained. Except in one verse, the word is used is Araditya, that there was one gopi who is very much known famous for her devotion. So still the name is not spoken. It is, re it is revealed that had the word Radha come on the lips of Sukhdeva Goswami, the Bhagavad narration would have stopped at that very minute. It would have gone into ecstasy. Because Radhani is very, very dear to Sukhdeva Goswami. And Sri Prabhupada says that in, in the previous life, he was a parrot of Radharani. So he, he likes the name of Radha. Had the word of Radha mentioned directly, the Bhagavatam narration would have stopped it. He would have not been able to speak to Radha. That's why he spoke it in a very indirect way. But he knows in his heart that Radha is none different from Krishna, very dear to Krishna. But in Chaitanya Chattam it says, Eka Deha Dui Besha Doshari means two bodies. Do deha eka atma. Two bodies, one soul. 
That is Radha and Krishna. So when Krishna wants to enjoy, he doesn't have to seek for anywhere. He creates for me himself. So actually, Radha, even Radharani is the manifestation of Krishna. And if you want, Prabhupada explains that many people say God is a man, but God can also be a woman, and that is Radha. So women will not feel that, oh, why is he a man? The feminine side of Krishna is Radha. And both are one. They uh, appeared to Rishnarak Muni wanted to see two of them. And for Kali Yuga, they combined it to one to become Sri Chaitanya Mahabhadu. So anyone who has a little uh, knowledge of Sri Prabhupada's explanation or, or Prabhupada's books, they know that when we are worshipping Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are worshipping Radha and Krishna. And it's very clear without the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we cannot enter into the pastimes or understanding of Radha and Krishna, which we have to be very proud of. It's only in the Gaudiya Mat, the worship of Radha and Krishna is there. No other Mat. Others, they have Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman. Others have just uh, Nand Narayan. But when you said Radha Krishna is in Gaudiya Mat, even before coming out, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in many temples, Krishna is worship alone. Like you go to Dwarka, it's only Krishna. If you go to Srinathji, only Krishna. <laughs> Many temples. Udupi is only Krishna. Of course, that Krishna is the boy. But after Chirai Mahaprabhu, Radha is worship along with Krishna. So we can say that by going through Radha, we understand Krishna. Now again, the parampara comes. That from the Radharani's mercy, we are getting Supreme Swami. And we asked, they gave the knowledge. It's not that he had forgotten, he knew it. And elsewhere it's also written that Bhagavatam, original Bhagavatam, Krishna knows. It may, and Lord Shiva knows, and maybe others may know. The word may be used, but Krishna knows it very well, and Lord Shiva knows it very well. So this is the glory of Bhagavatam. If you read Bhagavatam, you understand real religion, actual religion. Here Shubhrava makes a, a point, today's population or today's so-called environment is such that people think that spiritual life is not important. They even think that just moral instructions is enough. Now, what is moral instructions? Moral instructions mean to be a good person, a good human being. Even that is not enough. Without devotion, no one can be a perfect or a thorough gentleman, first of all. So, today's life is based on Mostly animalistic propensities, eating, meeting, uh, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Ahar, nidra, bhai, maithunya. But if you want to go deeper, then you have to go to Bhagavatam. People are mostly blind. People are so blind. Prabhupada says, anda. Anda means blind. And they want to take shelter of another anda. It's like blind following another blind. Where will they fall? How far will they go? Ultimately, they will fall. So take someone with eyes. Bhagavatam has given you eyes to see. Because when you read Bhagavatam, you feel the presence of Krishna. You see actually Krishna inside. When you're holding Bhagavatam in your hand like this, you're actually holding Krishna. Remember that. Bhagavatam is so pure, so powerful. And it has nothing like Dharma, Artha, Dharma, Moksha. It's beyond all this. Sri Chitra Babu, when he went to Udupi, he said, what is the ultimate goal of life? And they said that we should follow one national system to please Krishna. And Mahaprabhu said, yes, I like that you said to please Krishna. But much more than that is to engage in devotional service. Pancha Purushartha. Not just Dharma, Artha, Dharma, Moksha. Go for the Pancham. Fifth Purushartha is to engage in loving devotional service. If you want to go back home. Even people can't go for moksha. What you talk of going back home? Like people, if you tell them that for moksha, at least give certain number of years to the service of Krishna, they will not agree. Even when they become 80 years old, 90 years old, they want to struggle with their body, struggle with their family, or be, remain like a fat in the family. Or maybe they want respect for their family, but they don't know that after that, that is there. So people 
are not even interested in moksha. What to talk about going to the back home, back to country. People have no idea that. People are so blind. People think that I'm enjoying and I'll enjoy. Probably give you an example of a rabbit. When a rabbit is attacked, what does it do? It closes the eye. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to be attacked. It's going to be attacked. So we shouldn't be closing, close our eyes. Bhagavatam opens our eyes. Oma jnana tumerandasya jnana jnana shalakya. The spiritual master, I was born in darkness, but spiritual master opened my eyes. The eyes systematically open them. Robert says, first of all, first of all, learn the principle of the Bhagavad Gita. Understand Bhagavad Gita, then go to Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is called Samam Bonam. Everything is there. If you know Bhagavatam, you do not need to know anything further. Everything is needed, including that. And to prepare for Bhagavatam, you have to know Bhagavatam properly. So this is the way systematically the knowledge has to be understood. And we are also very, very fortunate that after Bhagavatam, we also have Chaitanya Chattamrit. In fact, most of the Chaitanya Chattamrit, almost 60% is Bhagavatam. The rest is the past tense so of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, being the Supreme Personality of Godhead, would go to hear Bhagavatam daily from Gadadhar Pandit. And Gadadhar Pandit is just like Sukhdev Goswami. But he has so much bhava that as soon as he started reading Bhagavatam, the tears would come out of his eyes. That a time came, all the letters had already rubbed off. But daily he would read Bhagavatam. And daily Mahaprabhu would read. And daily Mahaprabhu would like to hear about, especially two subjects, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu loved the most. Anybody knows which are the two sections he loved the most? Anybody likes to try in the Bhagavatam? Lord Narasimha pastimes? Uh, no. He likes especially Dhruva Kyan and Prahlad Kyan. The story of Dhruva Maharaj and the story of Prahlad Maharaj. Yes, Nushila is there. But Prahlad Charitra means the character of Prahlad, the devotion of Prahlad and Nushila, they all is included there. And also Dhruva. To explain to us or teach to us that even at a tender age of five, one can become a devotee. And the other, in other words, indirectly, is also telling us that we, our heart has to be tender, like Dhruva or Prahlad. And listen, just like when uh, Drew was told by Narad Muni, go back. Don't, no need to go to forest. Don't you know they are ferocious animals? And things happen in, in, in one's life, like, like someone can be insulted by a mother or someone can happen like a family problem. No need to go there. Just go back. And the first answer Prahlad Maharaj said, uh, sorry, Drew Maharaj said that, Whatever you say is, is true. If you cannot teach me the path of how to attain Lord Hari, I'm not going to go back. This proves the determination. And determination cannot come if you are not determined to, to, to or you are not set your goal. You have to set your goal. If you cannot set your goal of your life, you can never reach determination. Of course, the biggest problem in even keeping up your determination is to have lusty desires in your mind. They have to go. If you remain pure, free from lusty desires, and if your mind is free from karma, your determination can become like steel. It cannot be cut by anyone, cannot be broken by anyone. And you can go back home, back to God. So Bhagavatam is teaching you step by step that how to attain Krishna. So Bhagavatam and Krishna are identical, none different. Just like Bhagavad Gita is also Krishna because it's spoken by Krishna. And Bhagavatam is also Krishna. The whole complete story of who is Krishna. Just like when we will go to the 10th canto, Krishna will reveal himself to Devki and Vasudev, who were, who were they. In similar way, as you read Bhagavatam, you, you'll be revealed so many subject matters, but you have to read verse after verse after verse. Each verse has deep meaning inside and everything becomes open to you. So this is the Bhagavatam. 
which is like we are all standing in darkness and the Bhagavatam is like the sun is bringing light again to us. Sri Prabhupada in all the lectures, he says, what is this material world? It's nothing but darkness. If there was no sun and moon, there'd be nothing but just a black color in front of us in the material world. Now, even in this material world, actually it's darkness. If you do not know Bhagavatam Bhagavad you're living a life of darkness. So give up, up that darkness. Tam so ma jyotir gama. Tamas means darkness. Give up the darkness and come to the light. You know, younger days, there used to be Gujarati bhajans, which is which we have to sing this. Tam so ma jyotir gama. Then mutyur to uh, amritam. And so many similar, similar standards. But the, the meaning is very simple. That don't stay in darkness, come to the light. In Chaitanya with the famous lines, light is Krishna Suri Sama Maya Hai and the dark, Jaha Krishna, Jaha Krishna Taha Nai Maya Adhikara. That wherever there is Krishna, there cannot be darkness. Krishna is like the sun. And when Krishna is there, Maya has to go. Two cards stand together, one has to go. So if we bring Krishna with us through Bhagavatam or hear Bhagavatam daily, there is no chance we can go into Maya. Maya will stay far away from you. So I'll end up the session here. If you have any questions, there's also time is up. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Maybe I can start with questions. Um, mm -hmm. Prabhuji, you said the three uh, uh, Krishna Lokas would be Gokul, Vrindavan, and Dwarka, and according mm -hmm. to them, we'll go. so uh, Vrindavan is the forest and where he has performed all the the uh, pastimes with the gopis with the gopis and gokul is with mother jashoda mother jashoda is a baby form as a yeah. child and dwarka is in uh, as a king in, as a king as a king in reverence in reverence okay Prabhuji, and then vaikuntha there are many vaikunthas vaikunth planets because each when we see from the navel, Brahma comes up. So there are many, many. Oh, Vaikuntha Brahma. is like this. If you see the Bhagavatam, this is Vaikuntha. Yeah. Yeah. What is coming out of Brahma is under this, not in, not in this picture. When you say Vaikuntha, means beyond Brahma Jyoti, beyond Kailash. See, there are three Dhammas. Uh, what do you call it? Devi Dham, Mahesh Dham, and Hari Dham. For simple language. This is called Devida. Devida means the superintendent is Durga for the material world. Then there's Maheshtam, where the where is the uh, what do you call the planet of Lord Shiva and Parvati, also called Kailash. And then comes Vaikuntha, it's called Harita. Now, when you say Harita, it is all this variety. So when you say all Vaikuntha, if you read each one of this, there are different names. And even in this, if you go into detail, each incarnation has its own abode. So there's a big variety. Vaikuntha is a place with no missions. Now in that Vaikuntha is Krishna Loka. This is called Krishna Loka. And in Krishna Loka, there are three divisions, which you just mentioned. So according to our degree of devotion, how much devotion we have and how much we want it, Krishna will fulfill that desire. So we are very much dependent on the grace of Krishna when we engage in devotional service. We depend on the grace of Krishna. That in that way, Krishna will respond. Ye yatham prapadyante tam tataiva bhajami. Bhagavad says that <coughs> as you surrender to me, in the same proportion, I reward you. If you are looking only for Brahma Jyoti, I'll give you Brahma Jyoti. If you are looking for Paramatma only, I'll give you Paramatma future. If you are looking for me, then I'll, I'll come to you. Or I'll show you the way. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 10th chapter, verse number 10, 10 it says, Esham satata yutanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenam amokayantite. I'll give you the buddhi or the understanding how to come to me. So, in other words, we all depend on Krishna's mercy. Is it so, clear, Mother? So, Vaikuntha is the 
very large it's and in region. 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 from uh, uh, Brahmas, various Brahmas, and then you also have the Krishna Lok in Vaikuntha. No, in Vaikuntha there is no Brahmas. Vaikuntha is beyond this material world. Like if you then, see this, the jacket of this book, you don't see Brahma there. It means Brahma is below this, right? If you find that in Vaikuntha, the Lord Shiva's planet is here. After that is material world. And Brahma Loka is the topmost planet in the material world, mm -hmm. not in the Vaikuntha. It's still in the material world. And we all know that Brahma is also Jiva. He's not a Vishnu Tattva. He's empowered by Krishna. Just like, uh, what do you call it? To build a port, you need the soil, clay. So pour, uh, the clay and ingredients are given to Brahma to create. Without Brahma, uh, what do you call it? The ingredients Brahma cannot create. So the original creator remains Krishna. Okay, any other question? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, this uh, attainment of uh, different Vaikuntha planets is based on our, uh, uh, you know, different uh, uh, our attachments we have to serve Krishna, like uh, in servitude, in 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 Vatsalya Rasa, in yes, Madhurya Rasa, yes. in yes. different in different attachments what we have towards Krishna, right, Prabhu? True. How, how much you are inclined to someone? For example, like if you read the uh, Chaitanya Chatur, we have this devotee called Murari Gupta, who is Hanumanji. Yes. And we know that Lord Krishna, I mean, sorry, Mahaprabhu told him that now you should accept Krishna chant Krishna mantra. So he could not say no, but whole night he could not sleep. And he returned and told Mahaprabhu that I cannot do that. He said, What is the difficulty? He said, When I have given my head to Ramachandra, how can I chant the name of Krishna? So Chaitanya was very pleased. He says, that is, because that is your inclination and you passed the test. So our test is, we should be attached to one particular form of Krishna. Either you attached to become attached to Bal Krishna, so that you go to where Nan Maharaj and Vishuddha is there. Or you become attached to, if you are going for Aishwarya, go for Dwarkadish or Lakshmi Narayan, then you go there. If you're attached to Sita Ram, you go to Ayodhya. You're attached to the Lord Nashinga, there's the planet of Nashinga. And if you're attached to Krishna, then the three divisions are there. Even to Krishna, there are three divisions. If you're attached to serving gopis, you will go to Vaikuntha, I mean Vrindavan. If you're attached to serving in Vatsalya Bhav, you go to Mother Yashoda and Nan Maharaj. And if you're attached to Dwarka, do you should go to Dwarka. Dwarka is also in the Krishna world. Somebody has raised a hand also. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, it's Panchali. Um, yes. Thank you for the wonderful class. Um, Prabhuji, so if there is a, uh, there's um, Golok and there is Dwarka in the spiritual world as well. So yes. um, do, does uh, Krishna have um, all the wives as he has uh, the 16,108 wives in the mm. spiritual Dwarka as well, or are there different pastimes over there? And it's only Radharani who's the constant. Um, but Rukmini, where, where does Rukmini and all the other wives live in that case? Okay, Rukmini and other queens, they're all in Dwarka. The gopis along with Radharani, they're all in Vrindavan, even now. And when you say the Sakhas and everybody, they are all the boy, boy, what do you call it? The young age the boyfriends, and they are all in with Nan Maharaj. So even in the spiritual world, Krishna has 16,108 wives? Much more than that. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, because it says, Chinta Mani Prakar Sadma Shukal Pariksha. Laksha Viteshi should be a Vilayan, the Lakshmi Sahur Sapta Sambrama, say Vimanam, go win the Madi Purusha. Lakshmi Shastra means thousands of Lakshmis. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's not just the the You multiply that by thousands, you get the answer. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna, Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. 
Uh, Prabhu, sorry, Prabhuji, I had uh, another question relating to the first one. Uh, since, uh, you know, we are neophyte devotees and then we are not still attached to a particular form of Krishna. So, but yeah. we are still chanting and learning and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, contemplating and then still learning everything. So, we are still not attached to any uh, particular form of Krishna. But, uh, I mean, slowly as we as we go into our spiritual, uh, you know, uh, journey, we, we will get ourselves revealed or, you know, how, how it happens, that bro. Yes, you are right. You answered your own question. It will be revealed in the due course. If you read the Jaitanya Chattavi, teachings to Sanatana Goswami, then in, a, in the last section of the teachings, this is revealed. That as you, put, uh, sorry, teachings to Rupa Goswami. I don't know if you read that section of the devotional creeper. If you read that creeper, I know, uh, uh, Prabhu, have you read that section or heard about it? Raman Bhavide Kona Bhagavan Ji, Guru Krishna Prashade Bhai Bhakti Rata Bhij. Once you yes, get yes. the seed, you must have heard that verse, yeah? Yes, yes. Now, once yes. you get that seed, you water it. And then the creeper comes out. That is explained. After the creeper comes out, the offenses have to be avoided. After that, Chitra Mahal is teaching Guru Goswami that you should, according to your rasa, in Santa Raj, Das, and other, whatever it is, you choose a particular devotee and work under him so that you get a connection to that particular place. So when you leave your body, yes, at all times we are never pure, but Krishna will reveal uh, your, your bhava or your inclination towards a certain uh, way of worship or certain bhava. A certain rasa, we can say. You'll find more juice in that. And just like in Iskon, we find some devotees very much inclined to take worship only. Some like to do only book distribution. Some like to do only preaching. Some like to do other things. Some like in the kitchen. We can see it even in Iskon, we see that. Everyone doesn't have one taste. So according to your taste, you'll accept that same In the same way, according to your devotion, you'll be inclined, no, let me do this. For example, Sri Prabhupada, if you see Prabhupada's inclination, his inclination is towards Krishna and Balram. You know, Bhava. Though he taught everything, but his original Bhava is Krishna Balram temple in Vrindavan. So his Bhava is like uh, Krishna and Balram, like Sakha, Sakya Bhava. So we, we can't say, oh, Prabhupada, you are at that level. No. He taught this at least for Vrindavan, people will come to know. That this is Krishna and this is Bhagavan, who are the original Bhagavan of the entire creation. So at that time, knowledge is not very important. Understanding is very important and devotion is very important. If you are devoted in a particular way or inclined in a particular way, you get you reach your goal. Which Krishna says, I will do that. I'll help you. So if you can do at least 50% of our homework, the rest will be done by him. He will help us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. I would advise you to read that section. I think it's Madhya Leela, chapter 19. Okay. okay Madhya Leela, chapter 19. You'll get your answer now. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Can I ask one last question? I know we have run out of time. Mm. Prabhu, what is the abode of Garbhadaya uh, Vishnu? Because in that... Oh, okay. the, you have Vishnu and Lakshmi. And I thought Vishnu and Lakshmi stayed in Vaikuntha. Yeah, but when you talk about Garbhadaksha Vishnu, that's not Lakshmi. Garbhadaksha is from whom Brahma takes birth. At that time, the Lakshmi only serves him. He's in the bubble. If you know the bubble. Yes. The bubble so what is the bubble called? Yeah. Half the water is called Garbhadak Samudra. Garbhadak's ocean. Then he sleeps on the seashore. That is Garbhadaksha Vishnu. So not that abode is not Vaikuntha? No. That is not Vaikuntha. That is for the creation of the material world. There are called three Purushas. We all know Karanda Daksha Vishnu, Garbhadaksha Vishnu, Shiradaksha Vishnu. And originally they come from one cloud in Vaikuntha. From one cloud in Vaikuntha. Then they come down. 
four bushel more, and then everything gets folded back. Everything goes back into Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. Garbhadakshaya gets folded, goes to Mahavishnu. And then Mahavishnu keeps everything in him. Then when the new creation takes place, everything again comes out. We are also, how many times we have come here, nobody knows. But, what do you call it? As Avijash Prabhu is asking for is that called causal ocean? Yes, it's called causal ocean. Causal ocean, Mahavishnu floats there. It means it is surcharged with some creative power. That's why it's called causal, not casual. Causal. Many people may read it as casual, not casual. Causal. So you are right, Avinash. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh... Also, uh, Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu is also referred to as Shweta Deepa, Prabhu. A what? Shweta Deepa. Shweta Deepa. Yeah, Shweta means white. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, Prabhuji. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, we have passed our hour. I hope there are no more burning questions. I will ask Prahlad Prabhu to kindly close the session, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you. First, I would like to first start off by thanking His Grace, Rukmadas Prabhu, for giving us this wonderful nectar. Um, Prabhu, thank you for clarifying on the agenda of um, the uh, different scriptures that say, you know, different things. So thank you. Uh, thank you for clarifying. I also had a bit of a doubt there when you mentioned it. So thank you for answering that question as well. Um, I would also like to thank the devotees assembled also for making this an interactive session by asking any comments or by giving out their comments or any of their questions. So thank you all as well for attending. Um, so on behalf of ISKCON, Eldoret Prabhu, we'd like to thank you. So I'd like to kindly request all the devotees assembled to please unmute yourselves. Let's chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra once for His Grace, Rupma Das Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Chakra, <laughs> 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 <laughs>